Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Luxury Live Shows. Actually, I should say hello, Lexis, because <laughs> you guys are our Lexis. Um, hello, if you're new to this show, me and my partner here, Kat, we alternate on each other's channel and we do this luxury live show that um, basically we every week we come up with a topic and we do slides for you guys, kind of like a presentation, semi-professional, and then we do a live Q&A um, portion at the end. Let me share my screen. But actually, before I do that, something just came up to my mind today. I'm like, wait, we're uh, daylight saving is ending this weekend. So... I think part of the world, like mostly North America and part of part of like Oceania is and also Europe, I think you guys Europe. are also uh you know doing the same thing as us, but then Kat doesn't. Like a lot of you guys in Asia, they, they don't you don't change time. So next week, uh we're just keep on we're just gonna keep it at 8 p.m. for like my time, but next week for the folks in Kat's area. Uh, or in Asia, you guys are joining at noon instead. So just an hour later, if that makes sense. Anyway, you, you will see, you'll see when Kat posts her, her announcement. So yep. that's just a little extra bit of news. Cause I'm like, oh wait, we're not gonna be <laughs> on the same time again for, for like the next few months, which is kind of annoying, right? But anyway, we'll make it work. All right. Reminder, guys, um, check our last two episodes. If you haven't already, we chatted about a lot of these different bags from other brands as per requested. So definitely check out those episodes if you haven't already. And for the live Q&A portion, remember to always start your questions with a bunch of question marks in the front because we're on a different platform. So uh, it will really help us see the questions. All right, let's jump into the agenda. Today, we are going to talk about Moana. And this is the agenda. We're going to go through a bit of the history, talk about some of their achievements, innovations, why we haven't really heard about, well, at least I haven't really known about this brand is because apparently they were closed for <laughs> quite a number of years, but then revived recently. We're going to talk about, about some of their bags, uh, creative direction, and then also comparing with some of the Hermes bags. I'm going to get started on some of the history and then Kat's gonna do some of the bags at the end and the creative direction. Okay, so Moana Paris. It's pronounced by the way, moi, as in like, you know, like moi, me, na, and the T is silent. So they're one of the first luxury, um, basically luxury leather goods house on the, like back then. They are actually one of the first to be ever founded. It, I actually looked up LV. They were founded five years later. Um, so it's from this, I think a couple or I don't actually, I should have looked up who Octavie and Francois are. I don't know if they were a couple or maybe siblings, but um, they were trunk makers, the Coulombiens, and they founded their first atelier in 1849. So a long, long time ago. Uh, and then a few years later in 1869, they joined forces with Pauline Monois. So that's where the name came from. She was a travel goods specialist that uh, was selling uh, leather goods in uh, the um, uh, opera sector in, uh, in Paris. And the Coulombier, they were actually from the Faubourg area, a little bit north suburbs of Paris. Anyway, they joined forces and that's, when they opened their first store in Paris. They are very well known for their handcrafted know-how, and you're gonna see later about their innovations. And they were very famous for uh, their creations for the automobile world and won lots of prizes. And they were also um, part of a lot of the exhibitions at the time. This is the store. Uh, back then, in 1907, uh, I think they only had the one store. So as you can imagine, back then, in, um, you, you have to imagine like when 1840, sorry, did I say 1849? Yeah, that's right. Back then, they didn't even have cars, but you know, cars kind of came out in the 20th century, and that's when they 
um, innovated a lot. So anyway, the whole company was in the family for about three generations of you know the grandsons of Poulambier. And then it was open for about a hundred, over a hundred years, and then it closed in 1976. So we're gonna talk about that. Part of their innovations is waterproofing. So you have to think back. They used to have horse carts back then, and there was no, no such thing as like waterproof canvas. So they were one, I think they were the first to actually come up with waterproofing of canvas. So they were the first to discover this natural material, which is um, a vegetable gum in a, in a tree that they used on their, on basically their materials to make things waterproof. Uh, and then they patent that, uh, patented that technology in 1854. Uh, in 1870, they also created this wicker trunk, which is called English trunk, which is really innovative at the time because it only weighed about two kilograms. So imagine back then, I'm sure some of the, I don't know, luggages or whatever, they're pretty heavy, right? But they created this wicker trunk, which is basically a wicker frame, and then they covered it with different materials, but it was very, very lightweight. And they later perfected it and patented it as well in 1889. You're going to see uh, in the picture area, the middle picture is the limousine trunk. So this is a trunk that they created with a curve underneath. And this curve fits exactly on the roof of the cars at the time. So that was, you know, the 20th century when cars started becoming a thing. And this was very innovative because they didn't need any sort of metal racks to transport things anymore. They, the, this trunk fit exactly the shape of the car, of the roof of the car. So it was very, very innovative. Just imagine yourself back then, it's like so many years ago, they didn't have all the things that we have now, right? So these were some of the really remarkable innovations that they created at the time. In 1910, they uh, also invented a version of the limousine trunk that was unbreakable, and then they patented it as well. And uh, on top of that, throughout the years, they also came out with a, a bunch of different security mechanisms, the, the different locks and stuff like that. Let's talk about their achievements. They were regular participants of the World Fairs at the time. Um, they've been earning lots of special prizes, uh, honorable medals and things like that. In 1925, they actually broke the record because they won 13 medals that year uh, and also received the uh, diploma of honor, honor at the exhibition. So if you look at the red trunk in the middle, that was the trunk that uh, really gave them the opportunity to win all these, uh, all these medals. And at the time they were basically the leading French Maltzi, which is trunk maker uh, of the time. These, the picture on the bottom, that's a bunch of the different patents that they they had for the all the innovations that they created. And then on the top, the top picture on top, that's one of the initial canvas that they created that is kind of the one that you see now in their store, which is um, with the little M monograms. So really, really, interesting. Okay, let's talk about why we haven't really heard about it. At least I haven't. I never even saw this store here because it's not here. Um, so they were open for over 100 years until 1976 when they closed their doors. And then in the middle, throughout all these years, it was bought and resold to different groups and different families. And basically, as you can see, nothing really happened in the middle in terms of an actual physical store, like it, they weren't around. I mean, their trunks were still traveling around the world. Like people were still using the trunks that they were made, that were made before, but the company itself wasn't around until it was repurchased in 2010 by um, LVMH CEO, which is Bernard Arnault. Um, his holding company repurchased this, the Moana company and then wanted to revive it. 
So in 2011, they reopened their flagship store in Paris. And then throughout the nine years later up to now, there's actually 26 stores reopened all around the world. But uh, yeah, we don't have one in Canada, which is why I said that I don't really know about this brand because I haven't really seen it around. I think I probably saw it. I want to say I saw it in Singapore and probably in Hong Kong. But um, yeah, aside from that, I like, which is why I never knew why I didn't know this brand, but now I know. And as you can see on the picture here, this is the uh, this, the men's suitcase that they brought back from all the heritage that we talked about, the monogramming that they came out back then. Okay, so Ramesh Nair is their current artistic director and he has been for the last, past nine years. Uh, Kat will talk a little bit more about him, but he's actually known to be, you know, like the kind of artist that really is very traditional, wants to make things the way it should be. So in terms of making, because uh, Moana is a trunk maker, but obviously they are, they are nowadays a luxury goods maker. And he is very particular about things being made in France by artisans that are trained in France and that everything is made from beginning to scratch in France. So just basically all the techniques and where it is made and all like, he is very particular about that. He also prefers to concentrate on classics, pieces that are timeless. So you're not gonna really see a billion different designs, kind of how LV and Chanel, or any other fashion house actually, because they're actually fashion houses. Moana is not a fashion house. They are a luxury leather good maker. So they don't care about fashion in the same way that all the other fashion houses are. So you won't see a billion different designs from them. They are very, usually a lot of their designs are very kind of, uh, there's there's a backstory to it. And it's very much things that were created before or inspired from the things that were created before. So anyway, Kat will go into more details about Ramesh. So let's talk about some of their icons. Um, these are some of the, bags that you will see if you go to their store now. Oh, by the way, it's not a very clear picture, but I want to bring your attention to the left upper corner. That bag is going to be looking like a bag that you're going to see nowadays. So these are some of the first city bags that were created by Pauline Monoa. Okay, the first bag that I wanted to talk about or bring your attention to is called the Limousine. So that bag in the picture on the bottom, and it's very much inspired by their trunks, the limousine trunk because of that curve on the bottom. So they brought that curve on the bag, but they actually bought it like on the top. Uh, so it's basically a carry all. And uh, yeah, the distinctive feature is the curve. And um, it's, you know, a pretty nice bag. It's leather lined in goat skin. The outside, I think it's Dorion, but there's, there's probably other leathers as well. And um, yeah, it's just a nice carry-all bag. And the prices, I wasn't able to find a lot of information on pricing uh, from the bagaholicboy.com blog. It says that the small size is about 4,200 uh, Singapore dollars and the medium size is $5,350, but that was already uh, a year ago, so I don't know if it has changed or I don't know if um, it's still the case nowadays. But so this is one of their main icons inspired by the limousine trunk. And then of course there's also the vanity, the mini vanity. So on top you'll see the picture of, remember that trunk that won 13 medals? So it's kind of inspired from that. Uh, they created this mini vanity because of all the heritage around their trunk making. Um, yeah, I mean, the, one of the special things about this little mini vanity is the angle stitching, the way the stitches are are angled, I guess. <laughs> uh, but like really beautiful and uh, really pricey, but it's, it's just very, like all the 
attention to detail as you can see like the varnishing apparently it's like they varnish many times over and the jewel lock like all those things are all inspired from what they created before what they were famous for which is trunk making Rejane. so this bag remember i said i wanted to point your attention to one of the first cd bags back then so it kind of looks like the Rejane, right so this bag was named after then the actress called Gab uh, her name was Gabrielle Rejane, and she was a longtime friend of uh, Pauline Moina, um, which is, by the way, Pauline is the only trunk maker of the entire history, apparently, the only woman trunk maker of the entire history, which is very interesting to know. Uh, so yeah, this bag is one of the first, is, it was, inspired from the one of the first city bags, which is supposed to be more lightweight and uh, more fun for females to use because you have to imagine, put yourself back, you know, a couple hundred, couple hundred years ago, back then the bags were probably not that practical, not that fun to use. So this was one of the earlier creation, at least this bag is inspired from one of the earlier creations of a more fun female bag to use. And um, the curves apparently are modeled, you know, around their trunks and whatnot. So as you can see, all these designs are very, um, they, they always have a story around it and they always inspire, are inspired from the pieces from before. At least features of it will be inspired from a lot of the history. The Gabrielle. So this bag was actually created later, I think. Uh, I think Kat will get into more details about when it was created, but uh, they created this bag again because of the actress Gabrielle Rejane. Uh, so apparently there was this legend that she traveled around the world with a purple crocodile trunk. And so they created this bag in honor of that legend. It's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, just, you know, the curves, it echoes the the limousine trunk and the twist lock, all these things, there's, you know, there's always something about their designs that are, you know, brought back from their creations back then. And I wanna bring your attention to the bag on the bottom. So that one is called the Gabrielle Clutch. And I've heard about this Gabrielle Clutch being compared to the Kelly Mini a lot. And uh, it will be interesting to see this in person because I do like myself as well. This Gabrielle clutch is really pretty. Again, I don't know what the price is. There's not really a lot of pricing information. Only thing I can find was on 24s.com, uh, which I did link in the video description, by the way, if you want to check it out, is that uh, the mini Gabrielle, which is the one on top, is about 3,600 euros. And then finally, their canvas. So remember the waterproofing innovation that they patented back then? Well, this is kind of what they brought back, you know, this, the, the canvas, which they call Toile 1920 is, uh, is, you know, basically they created this canvas because of their history of creating waterproofing materials. And then they brought back the M monogram with um, uh, the motif on their canvas. And apparently each individual letter is hand painted. I don't know if it's still really the case, but um, yeah, it's really interesting if it's still done this way. I wonder if it is, but uh, it would be pretty impressive if it is, if it is. So those are some of the references of, you know, where I found all this information. And I'm gonna let Kat jump into more about the artistic direction. Awesome. Thank you. What great research. Okay, so for the next few, not many slides, I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, Ramesh Nair. Um, and then I'll take you through some of the bag comparisons, which I found because a lot of people always compare Moana uh, to Hermes. So, you know, it's good to see some of the inspirations that they have um, between each other. And there is it is because of Ramesh Nair. Now he is actually, um, he hails from India and he has actually no 
I mean, from what all I've, I've read, you know, research about his background, he's actually a very private person. You know, he doesn't really share much about um, his life and all, but through interviews, you know, he, he actually was going to join the army. So that's a real, very, very different from somebody who's always been exposed to fashion and, you know, you know, has maybe parents from that heritage. But no, he was just any other person who didn't really know what he wanted to do with his life. Then he decided, you know what, I think I'm going to join the army. <laughs> but he saw a newspaper article to say, come and join this new school in India called, I think, it's Fashion Institute, I think, um, of New York in India. And he said, you know what, I'll, I'll just sign up. You know, how, how many people who don't have the background would have the kind of guts to say, I'm not going to join the army. I'm going to go the other way and try this out because... He was actually at like sort of like a turning point of his life where he wanted to do something, but he wasn't really sure. So he just tried it out and he applied in 1986 and he was selected. And he was selected because uh, what he said was maybe they saw something unique in him. He had things that probably were not, no not to say not normal, like unusual, his creative sense. And I think that is what took him through his career. So he's worked with a Japanese uh, a fashion designer, Yoji Yamamoto. Uh, how do you pronounce this? Christian Lacroix? La Christian Lacroix. Uh, Christian Lacroix. And then his, I think his biggest and most, um, I think the one that he gets the most inspiration from was his time in Hermès under uh, Martin Margiela and Jean-Paul Gaultier. He spent 11 years there as a senior designer. So 11 years is a long time. And from, from what he shared is they actually allowed him a lot of free space to have his creativity um, expanded. So they don't really, uh, you know, like they're not really micromanaging him. So I think that allowed him to express how he felt about fashion. And with 11 years under these two, you know, fashion icons is... I think that's where he got his, um, uh, uh, I think, direction, right? So then later on, he was hired when Mo Moana was uh, bought by LVMH's CEO. I think they saw something different in him. So that's where he was hired for the next I think, 10 years. He was there before he retired and said, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. And because he's so private, he doesn't even tell anybody what he's doing. You would think, right, they would jump to somewhere else and you know i'm gonna sh do my own um you know fashion house but no he's just gone no nah, you know i'm gonna do my own thing so that's how private he is and probably if you don't know the brand actually i've never heard of him as well until i started the research about wana so okay because of his 11 years in <laughs> in Hermes, and yes what um amy said is he's actually very very particular he is almost like a perfectionist like probably, you know, when he applied to go to this school, he was, you know, maybe that is his um, drive that he's just, he just wants, wants to get it. And uh, he, he is very, very particular about design and he wants to make sure everything is, you know, French and all that. So let's go to the next few slides. I think this is kind of interesting to see the similarities and why people will say, oh, I think I've seen this bag before. I think I've seen this. Um, it's quite common, but there are some bags, obviously, that he created himself. But this is some of the similarities where the Juana limousine bag looks very similar to the Hermes Victoria bag. You can definitely see that, you know, it's not a unique shape for sure. <laughs> but, you know, there is this choice that if you like this bag, but you, you know, you like the design from the Hermes. This is, I don't think it's discontinued from Hermes, but... Um, there is something very similar to the uh, limousine in uh, Moana. So let's go it's quite quickly for this one. This is interesting. So the Gabrielle bag, it is very, it's always compared. Like if you go even into the store, I've been into the store a few times uh, at Moana and even the essays that say, oh, you know, it, it kind of looks like, <laughs> which I don't know if, that is that, if, if that's what they're trying to do, the selling point, like, oh, we want to compare it to the Kelly. But because of the design, you know, it has a little shorter flap. It has the top handle. It comes with a detachable strap. Uh, there is definitely that element of similarity. 
um, with the two bags. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so the Kelly Clutch and the Kelly Pochette. This is definitely something very similar between the two bags and the Gabrielle bag. Like, uh, it is obviously a inspiration from the the bag, uh, which looks like the the other Kelly, <laughs> the top handle one. Um, I <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's ask Amy. Which do you prefer? <laughs> Honestly, if I wasn't um, it, okay, so if if. If Hermes was not like the coveted brand that it is now and like how hard it is to get it, blah, blah, blah. If I were just to look at plain design and just aesthetics and whether I will find it fussy to get in and out, I will prefer the Gabrielle Clutch. I know. I have the same thought. When I when I was putting on this slide together, it was very interesting for me because when I was comparing them, I had... I had like a visual to see which I would actually find more useful and user-friendly. I thought the Gabrielle clutch would be a little bit easier to get in and out because of the straps on the Kelly pochette, right? Because they're actually really similar and it looks really nice as well and very sophisticated. So yeah, it's interesting to see it visually next to each other because if you see the Kelly pochette on its own, you say, oh yes, the Kelly. But there are, you know, the bag that... Um, Ramesh revived and, you know, redesigned and make it modern. The Ga Gabriel Clutch is actually a really nice looking bag as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, And next. also like the way that it opens, you twist a little, yes. little triangle, like it's not the triangle, but the little tip on the, um, on the, on the top. It, it just looks so much easier to get in and out of this bag. And plus there's a little bit more angle to it. It just looks very feminine. I don't know. There's aesthetically very pleasing for sure. For sure. Okay, so there is this bag. Um, it's called the Madeline. Uh, I should have taken a side view. So the side view of this bag, it's sort of like a triangle shape. And uh, I believe they have one that is, um, I think with, even with the like a little charm. So this bag, it, it's actually a bag. But when I saw this, I was like, oh, I kind of, the lock kind of looks a little familiar. It's very unique where you, is a strap that goes in between the metal piece. And then I thought, I wonder if there is something similar at Hermes. And there was this thing that I found, which is the doggone. It's just that portion. They, they, Hermes doesn't have any bags that I know of currently. Maria, who is here, could correct me. <laughs> uh, that, that they have a bag with this kind of uh, front lock. But there is this bag that has this front lock. Because if you like this, you know, it's it's so much easier. There's no clip. There's no turn lock. It's just a slip between the lock. There is an opening. Um, Wana has a bag. And I think they have several designs of this. But it's really interesting to see there's a sim like the slight inspiration. Similar, but not really. Yeah. So this is the Doggone and Madeline between the two brands. Okay. I was really trying hard <laughs> to find something similar to the Rajan. How do you pronounce this? Rajan. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, saddle bag. And the closest I get, just, you know, it's, I might be reaching a little bit, but the closest I could get is the Gypsier from Hermes because of the way they have a longer flap. Of course, the locks are very different, whereas the Gypsia is a, uh, kind of just a flap over and then you put the two, the two pieces to lock it. Whereas for the uh, saddle one from Wana, it's, it's still a lock and you got to open it this way. But what's, I think what is sort of similar is maybe the strap because it's at the back, um, the way it's, you know, just a crossbody bag. It's not really the same, but uh, this is where, you know, it starts to get a little bit more mm, same, same, but not really. So there's a version for you. If you like the, if you like this kind of saddleback look, there's one in Wana. This is, okay. So <laughs> I, I thought this is a, actually, I should have put two photos in the Hermes because I feel this Josephine bag has, it takes inspiration from two bags. One is the Bolit right? Because of the shape, you know, the shell shape with the top handle. But the handles from the Josephine bag is actually very similar to Hermes's toolbox. 
because it actually falls outwards and it falls down, whereas the bolide doesn't. So I have the toolbox and I, when, no, when I was looking at this, I was like, mm, it has the shape of the bolide, but not the handles. And the handles to me, similar, even the, even the leather tabs look very similar to the toolbox. So this is like a merge, you know, like a, like a baby <laughs> between two bags from Hermes and you get the Josephine, which I think is actually very unique because they created with two different types of leathers. And I love the lock there. That's It's very different because the one in Boli, uh, Hermes is just a zip. So there is this architecture element and design at Mona because you know they like they, they want to make sure everything is you know it's like Hermes's hand stitch you know perfection they have an architecture uh, a component in Mona I think that's it I think I've got one ah okay so these are the uniquely all right uniquely so it's not all the same you know even though Ramesh Nath came 11 years obviously you know if you've got 11 years of experience you definitely want to bring some of you, you are definitely influenced by that experience and for all you know some of the experience that is his own personal design right but of course he has created uniquely Moana uh the Pauline which is this I could not find anything like it I unless some you know if, maybe some of you have seen bags that look like this but it is really uniquely there because it has this, it's almost like a body shape, like a kind of like reminds me of like my pear body shape at the bottom. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Some may say it has like, it's like their version of a Birkin, but it doesn't really because it has, you know, it's got the strap. It's if, uh, if I put a picture of somebody carrying it, it's actually really, really ladylike, this bag. It's not too bulky. You know, it's proportionate to your body. Um, and then, of course, the R Rajan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Rajan. Okay. And then finally, this is the one that I think everybody, uh, when Moana, you know, revival, everybody was just like, this is the clutch. This is the new clutch that the hot thing, right? The Vinnie, the vanity case. They even have this pyramid and they have this sphere which actually I haven't really seen um, a lot of people show on social media. The two popular ones is the vanity case and their pyramid. It is like an ornament, right? It's like a jewel piece that you carry, you hang and dangle at your uh, wrist or your elbow. It's actually really, like, like Amy said, it's made so well. And one of the things that uh, Rame said is he works with two crazy like designers. They are so... They're like perfectionists even more than him. They would come to him with a design. This is what he said in an interview. They would come to him with a design. And instead of saying things, oh my gosh, it's finished. Like they're so proud of something being finished. They always bring something to him like it's finished. But there's, there's, a, there's a slight dissatisfaction in their voice when they say it's finished. It's like they, they cannot believe they couldn't bring something perfect to him. And they will go through multiple rounds until they sort of like, it's it's finished. It's sort of like, you know, there's no, they're never happy with what they're doing. So that's why it's always made more than perfect. So this banner, this pyramid case, apparently it was, it took years. He, he said it took like more than two years to create because it was, you know, so many ways to create it and put it together and get it right, the lock. The, the placements of the leather, the heart, the what the woodwork inside. So if there's anything that you want to get, like uniquely Moana, I think if you do find a need for a clutch, this is definitely one of those uh, pieces. It is yeah. stunning though, even though it's very simple when you look at it. But yeah, thank you so much, Kat, for that comparison overview with Hermes and in-depth uh, knowledge of the designer. So of course, guys, we're going to jump into the live Q&A portion. So make sure that you do put those question marks in front of um, in front of your questions. And I am gonna get to your questions now. How did you guys like this? Did you guys learn anything new? I obviously did. Like when I was researching, I was like, wow, there's, there's actually not like, it's, you can't say that there isn't enough information, but everyone just talks about a, like a little bit of just a little bits of, and you have to like kind of put it all together. So if you guys want to check out those references that I uh, put in one of the slides, you 
you can really see there's one that's like chrono chronologically, you can see all the different trunks and all the different patterns uh, and different dates throughout the, the century that they were alive in business, I mean, and um, just all the different designs and uh, yeah, it's, and you have to bring yourself back like, you know, 150 years back, like, you know, it's, it's a long time ago. There was no cars yet, even back then. So, um, yeah. And now actually I should have added that right after, uh, Ramesh, uh, left, um, the new designer, his name is Nicholas, Nicholas Knightley, I believe Nicholas Knightley. And he's actually from LV. Uh, I can't really remember what is his role in LV, but now he is the creative designer in Wana. So if he were to continue with the heritage, like following Ramesh's foot, uh, footsteps, keeping you know the architecture, the craftsmanship, the workmanship, he could be bringing some really uh, maybe older elements from LV's time. Because LV is also a very old, old, has a very long heritage. We might be able to see some of that. Ah, there we go. Nightly. He is the leather good designer. That's right. That's right. So who knows? You know, he might be going back into the archives and looking back at all the trunks that LV did years and what, hundred over years ago. And we might be seeing things that are very classic. So that would be very interesting, right? Because, you know, now LV is quite um, fashionable and trendy. But can you imagine if Nicholas goes back into the... <laughs> the treasure chest of LV in the years ago and brings out some real amazing pieces that would be really interesting to see at Wana. Yes, and I'm seeing comments from Maria. She's saying that the Rejan has more in common with some LV bags because Hermes doesn't really have a low-class bag. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we... we handbag addicts we like to compare <laughs> anyway <laughs> but yes definitely a, a lot of people even even prior to doing this research i watch uh even though i wasn't not i was not even interested in the kelly pochette or a kelly mini i i did see videos on youtube where people compared it with the moana gabrielle cut clutch so uh, even i knew that and i'm not even like I'm not even on the market to get any of those bags. Let's see. Moana toile up against LV Never Falls, Guayar Saint Louis, Croisière, Keepalls. Yes. 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 I think yes. Every bag, every luxury bag brand seems to have this, you know, um, monogrammed uh, bag style, which is canvas. And you know it's it's and it's, it's hard nice. to like I I find it almost hard to say who came out with it first because, like I said, that's why I was interested in uh, knowing when LV came out because LV also was known for their trunks, but LV was actually founded later. But then this the thing is like even today, as of today, right? Fashion houses, they inspire from each other. So it's also, it's so hard to say who came out with what first, but obviously Moana did a lot of the things, uh, especially in the um, trunk for the automobile world. So which is why, like those are just some of the trunks that we showed you on in the slides. Like, like I said, if you went back to the references, you're gonna see like chronologically, they have so many different one and a lot of them like so old because you have to remember back then the shape of cars were different they were called automobiles they were not even called cars and the limousine was actually just a car you know what i mean like it's not the limousine that you think of the yeah. limousine today it, they were just cars basically but they called them limousine and they would call them they, they it was called the limousine trunk because it fit exactly on top of the shape of the, of the curve of that car but it was actually just a car not a limousine you know what i mean uh so you really have to transport your mind back then and which is why it was so interesting to do this research for one now because uh like i said i never heard about this brand until i saw it on youtube the first time and now i know why because 
they were not around for a long, long time until it was revived quite recently, 2011. So almost 2012, because it was December 2011, right? Yeah. So it's really sad because uh, I was reading the history as well, just to, you know, because Amy was doing all the research, but, you know, I was just reading as well. It's, it was like, wow, they closed for so many years and they had so many stars before they closed in 1976. But by the time they were, you know, the last standing, they just had one star. It just feels so, you know, it just feels so sad because they had like a 160 year history. And because, you know, I mean, time and uh, fashion and, you know, people like the inner things and this, this huge brand, which, which such deep, you know, deep history when so many things that they have, it just dwindled, 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 dwindled into one store. And I felt like, oh my gosh, if I was the family, like if I was the, you know, grandchild of this brand, I would feel so, I don't, I just don't know what I would feel like. <gasps> and then close the doors. And then one yes, last three generations of grandsons. Um, this is an interesting comment by Deborah. You know what? Um, I know where you're coming from. So Deborah is saying that you're not fond of the Moana bags or the M on the bags. Um, they are first and foremost a trunk maker. So I mean, obviously they uh, put Pauline and Moana joined forces with. Um, like I said, I, I wish I knew if they were a couple or just uh, family members, but um, like siblings, uh, the Coulombier, but um, yeah, they they were form most first and foremost trunk makers, and then Pauline Moana joined, and she was a, a leather specialist, so travel leather specialist. So I I would you know I would imagine uh, little leather goods and handbags and things like that. So I feel like maybe that's why their handbags are not as exciting. Like I said, they're not a fashion house. That's that's what I gathered from reading the research. Um, and they're not so concerned about churning out millions of different bags, just like most fashion houses are doing right now. What is this mug that you guys are talking about? Congrats on mug, on my mug. Are you buying us a mug? <laughs> I, I saw something about mugs as well. I know. <laughs> Oh, the Pauline might compete with the toolbox. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. It does kind of look like, yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you would have had a chance. I don't know if, uh, Kat, if you had a chance to check out some Wana bags in person, but I don't have access to a store here. Uh, so I would, like, they're all their locked mechanism, like the jewel mechanism. When, when I read it, the description is... Is good, but it's you still. I can't test it out. So, have you had a it's chance good. to test some of their bags? I have tried. Okay, I have not tried all the locks, like all these turns and everything. But I have tried the M lock, and it's yeah. it, it. Okay, maybe it's not the right comparison, but if um, if any of you have tried the um, um, LV's twist lock, you know the LV on the tw the yes, twist. Yes, I have actually. Yeah, uh, you have. So you know that feeling of like. Uh, so just imagine you have the you have Moana has that same kind of feeling, but it's even more like satisfying. <laughs> oh, like like smoother. Yeah, so, yeah, you can like I don't know how to explain. So it's a really nice. You just get it's a very it's a very yeah it's a very satisfying kind of lock. <laughs> So how to explain, right? How do you explain locks on YouTube? It's just really <laughs> satisfying. The sound, the click, the, the movement. <laughs> but the Pauline bag, to answer that question, is actually a zip. From what I've seen, I mean, I have not seen the bag in real life, but I was when I was looking at all the photos, it's actually a zip across compared to like a Birkin, which is a flap, right? Uh, I think what you explained earlier also about how the creative director himself and his um, the two other designers that he works with, how perfectionist of of character they are, probably reflects on just how you describe the lock. 
how like it's so much more satisfying because it's probably smoother and all that. They probably were not satisfied until they were satisfied. So like, <laughs> it's funny though. If you all want to read, like just go and research. Like, actually, like I said, like this Ramesh person, he 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 doesn't. He's very private. So all the things that I've read and I learned is through interviews that he's given. So he's given a lot of interviews, but they're all roughly the same. But some of them he's like given a little bit more information. So about the two designers, he was sort of like joking of how he finds it so frustrating and yet satisfying to work with such, you know, the like perfectionist artisans because it's frustrating because he as a designer needs to churn the thing out. But every time they would come to him, it's not, do it's not done yet. It's not ready. And he'd be like, why? What's wrong? And then, you know, maybe out of there being pushed, they will give him something, but they'll give him something so like, it's done. Like they're not happy. And then he, know he as the boss knows they're not happy. So like, what's not happy? And they go through it. He said, it's such a process, but the end result is it's worth all of that. So he was just saying that it's frustrating, but satisfying. Yeah, so it's yeah, a, yeah. Uh, can you imagine working with people oh. like that? <laughs> I think it, it only works in certain industries. So maybe in this case, it works because they're yeah, not so yeah. concerned about turning out different designs. Like I said earlier, they're not a fashion house per se, but it will definitely not work if you were in the software industry. Oh my gosh, definitely. there's always <laughs> going to be bugs in software. There's yeah, like, no, yeah, like just get it out first, just get it bugs. out. On top of that, so <laughs> it's not gonna work everywhere. You can't really yeah. be a perfectionist. Well, you have to in a way so that it doesn't crash, but <laughs> there's gonna be bugs anyway. It's funny, Maria saying that the little bags look like Christmas decoration. It's true, they, they're so cute. Yeah. They're so cute looking. <laughs> um, Michelle, yes, we do not have a Moana store in the US, so it's nice to hear different from the usual. Thanks for, thank you. Thank you. So if you love this, don't forget to give the channel yeah. a like. <laughs> and Maria saying heritage is so important right now in terms of building the brand. I totally agree. I think prior to this, and it's funny because we talk about luxury all the time, but prior to this presentation, like, you know, if, if I didn't know all this about Moana, I would not really appreciate it. Like I would walk in their store and think, hmm, nothing interesting out, you know what I yeah. mean? Cause they only yeah. have a handful of designs and they're all rather plain, uh, you know, except the monogram, but like, you know what I mean? Like the designs are very simple cause they have very clean lines and classic lines. If you didn't know the heritage, if you didn't know that they modeled it against uh, their trunks from back then, from uh the the curve back then like you wouldn't know all of this right and you wouldn't really appreciate it yeah totally now i after like oh thank you. <laughs> thank you thank you after after doing the research and just you know reading and um you know understanding the creative direction and you know just you know looking at all this i was like i kind of like more now i'm like yeah, yeah i like that i like it's a it's actually a really important differentiation to all the brands right now. Like, sure, we know LV and all have the their heritage, but there is something very almost attra quite attractive to the brand like Moana because it's it's like they are so stickler to their heritage that they don't really divert very I mean, deviate very much. So hmm, eyes are yeah. open. <laughs> oh, sorry. But I was going to say, which leads uh, really nicely to this question from Deborah. She's wondering how the M-coded canvas pieces hold up. And I'm wondering, too, because not only did they patent this technology right back then, making this waterproof material, but they seem to be very much sticklers of quality and craftsmanship, right? Just, just from the research, right? So I wonder... Is their canvas better too? Like, I wonder, I yeah. wonder. So I don't know if anybody has their bags to maybe let us know. It would be interesting to, uh, if, if you have maybe a, a LV canvas to compare it to, I don't know. Oh, this is a good question. 
Which luxury brand that has canvas bags would you girls choose if there was no LV? Ooh. <laughs> this one, I was like, oh my God, a good one. Ooh. I wish I knew because, see, I know Kat has a, um, what's the brand again? For Foray Lepage. Yeah, Foray Lepage. And I know you have that, but I, I don't know how it feels. Uh, and I, I've never had a Guaya. I've never actually touched a Guaya because we don't have this Guaya store here either. So it's like, we have nothing. Uh, um, so I don't have th those to compare to. It's hard to say. I. And I also wonder, this is just me wondering, okay, I'm not saying any brands are, like, I'm not saying like their quality is changing or anything, but I do wonder that today, nowadays, in modern age, they're probably not really using that tree material anymore. <laughs> they're probably using some other thing. Uh, so is it, is it fair to say that maybe technology today is also... Um, mm, it's a good and bad thing, I guess. Like maybe, maybe uh, using technology today with the can waterproof canvas today is, yeah, is the canvas today better? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, actually, yeah. Since you have Forêt Le Page and you have, you also have canvas bags, uh, and I don't know how many other canvas bags you have. Which ones would you choose if it was not LV? <laughs> if there was no LV, huh? I okay, so I only know two like outside of LV or those that I have considered, which is Goyard and uh for Foray Lepage, right? Is that Foray Lepage? Yeah, okay. So I chose the I chose the second one because I felt that it was thicker and it felt a little bit more durable. Now, however, I don't know whether my choice was influenced because I watched a lot of YouTube and everybody said that Goyard is, you know, too thin and it will, you know, it will puncture easily um, and it will peel and all. So I don't know. But when I felt the two, uh, no, sorry, I didn't felt the two. I just re I felt the Goyard. And that time when I bought the Farilla Pash, I couldn't feel it because... I bought it overseas, right? I bought it based on research on YouTube. Um, it did feel a little bit thin. So if I had to choose again, I would still go for the one that I picked, for Ella Page. But Goyard has to be popular for a reason, right? It has to be so... I mean, it, doesn't, it cannot be so bad that nobody buys it. Uh, everybody has one and a lot of people who have it say it's good so I guess good is also very relative like <laughs> what I are know, you carrying in your bag you know I wonder I wonder if because Guayang is more known than say Fahri Lepage or other less known canvas uh, motif is probably because there's more Guayang store around than Maybe. Like I've never seen a Forêt La Page store either. <laughs> true, true, true. That's true. Unless you're in Europe or even not even Europe, like Paris, I guess. So it makes you wonder, right? So what if what if now Moana's canvas bags are also because we're not known and but actually it's like, oh my gosh, where have you been? All our lives kind of canvas. Yeah. So yeah, I so, should yeah, go and I, check I, it I out. When I went into the store before this whole live stream and research, I, I went in because after I watched Mel in Melbourne's video and I saw her buy, I believe it was the clutch, the vanity clutch. Is it? I think that's the one that she has. And I went into store without any idea of the heritage and understanding of the brand. Honestly, my first impression is that it's quite plain. Like just... Individual, no information. All I know is one YouTube video. I'll go in like, oh, it's kind of plain. But you can see the, you can actually see the quality of their bags, especially if you hold one. I held the, I think it's the Rajan. I held that. The only thing is for a an individual to use the bag, um, it was a little bit heavier than what I would like. But they didn't have the canvas, so 
that was really long ago when they first opened the stores in Singapore. So maybe, yeah, maybe I should go and check it out, right? Try the canvas and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The next question is for you, Kat. Oh. Since you're 164 cm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we like to think the small or the large or Chanel 19 is better. I think I tried both and think large looks better, but I found Jumbo Classic too big. Uh, actually, the large, which is the one that I like, right? I think that's the large, not the maxi, the, the, the size between. Yeah, yeah. We call it the medium here, but I, we, yeah, it's that, it's that one that you, the, okay. the one that you like. Okay, so um, I personally think the large looks good on me as well. I feel like uh, the small is nice, but I for my height, I can actually carry off the large as well. Plus, after they re uh, redesign the strap, I mean, or they shorten the strap, I find that it sits better and it looks better, and I feel like it. It looks better than the Jumbo Classic because it's slouchier, right? It's softer. It molds to your body better. It doesn't stick out so much. The Jumbo Classic, of course, is a classic bag and the size is probably about the same. It looks more substantial because it's very structured. And because it's structured, it won't, you know, kind of like curve along your body, which is probably why you find it looks bigger compared to the Chanel 19. So yeah, I agree with you. It actually looks better than the Jumbo just because of the way it's softer, you know, it's more pillowy and yeah. So I hope that helps you. <laughs> I, I personally like the large. Yeah, I um, so I am I think I'm the same height as you as well, 5'4". Uh, yeah. uh, although my husband say that I'm a little less than 5'4". Anyway, 5'4". <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I do like both sizes too. Uh, I do feel like the large or the medium. Um, you know what it reminds me? It's it's kind of like, think of the, I know it's not the same bag, but think of the Speedy. So the Speedy, if you put an organizer in it, then it becomes like the classic lap jumbo. Mm -hmm. It's like so structured. It's better if you hand hold it. But if it's slouchier and you wear it crossbody, then it still looks really decent like it has a different vibe it looks very decent more casual more laid back so which is why i feel like uh, those two sizes for the 19 is probably the most versatile for most people and most height unless you're very petite then obviously choose the small yeah 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 okay we got an explanation why we're talking about mug <laughs> congratulations deborah i was like mug I well, saw some mug. I'm like, what are they talking about? Am I missing something? <laughs> okay, Grace. My sister-in-law has the Moana canvas tote that she bought in Paris. She used it daily for about two years, and it has virtually no wear. Wow. Awesome. That is amazing to know. So there you go. One testimonial <laughs> of their canvas. <laughs> Oops, sorry, it just jumped. Okay, Maria, historical reason the Maison have the initials, LV Moana Guaya, people could distinguish luggage at the train station, ship ports, added the client's initials and stripes, etc. Yes, I remember reading this too, yes. Um, which is, you know what, and it's also, nowadays it's like branding, right, so. It's also uh, kind of like their signature and their pride in it as well. But yes, so true. Back then, that's how they distinguished people's yeah, luggage. They didn't have the, the luggage tag that they scan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they, they hand paint their initials, right? Uh, and then um, without a stencil. And... But from what I understood, they also did that for the actual canvas, which is kind of crazy if you... <laughs> if you had to do that for a large piece of canvas for every single bag. Okay, new way. If you both were to get another tweed bag, which bag style would it would you get? Tweed. Hmm. I don't have a tweed bag. <laughs> but if I yeah, were to get a tweed bag. <laughs> um 
I don't know if I'll get another tweet bag, but if I would, and I always said that I like the the tweed Chanel 19. <laughs> Ooh. So it would be that one, I think. It has to have a top handle. That's the thing. Because yeah, yeah. with tweed being a more, um, it's not leather, right? So it will have frays and pilling, stuff like that, if if it rubs against your body a lot. So I, I would really want a top handle so that I can just top handle it. What about mm -hmm. you? Same. I would have gone for the 19 as well. I don't have a tweed bag, but I think if I were to get a tweed bag, it would be in that style. The, I think top handles will be year 2021's <laughs> style for a lot of bags. Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay, Kat, uh, in agreement with you, a lot more interested in a brand now. Yes, for sure. Yep, 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 yep for sure. I, I think knowing more, I, I guess, you know, and I, I, I bring this to, you know, connection to MS as well, because people say, you know, once you understand the brand, once you really appreciate what they've done, the history, then you kind of really fall in love with the brand. I feel like that's how I am. No, I'm not falling in love with the Moana brand, but I'm just like really appreciating their craftsmanships, their history. And I kind of feel sad that they had to close the shop. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And now yeah. they're revived. It's like, wow. Wow. What a revival. Yes. And to echo uh, the appreciation for brands. So um, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that several times in my different videos, but my mom is. She's a seamstress, right? But she doesn't know brands. She doesn't, she's not in so consumed by the world of wearing labels and designers. Obviously, she didn't have the means for it. And so she was never really into it to begin with. So dressing up and carrying a designer brand is never really a priority, let alone. Uh, so she never really understood or even knew that Chanel, Gabrielle Chanel is a girl. <laughs> so it's funny. And I didn't know that she didn't know. And the reason why I found out is because when I, uh, when we went to Hong Kong in 2018 and it happened to be uh, at the same time when they had the exhibition and it was a free exhibition. So I, uh, dragged everyone to come with me well, not drag they, they could not go right but it was free why not go right and so we saw so many beautiful things at, at the ex exhibition and my mom was kind of like she was so interested everyone else like you know my uncle my brother they were like eh, whatever <laughs> but like my mom was so captivated by everything mm -hmm. uh, especially because during that exhibition they also had uh her only collection of of uh diamond jewelry that she created and it was never i don't think it was ever sold or anything like that i i can't remember but it was very like intricate designs that she created and it was show shown there and she was so captivated and then she learned afterwards because i was explaining to her why i love their bag so much like you mm -hmm. know explaining timelessness and resale value and not resale value but like keeping their value like those concepts that normal people don't really know or understand mm -hmm. i was explaining that to her a little bit afterwards and then she and then i said i kept saying she 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 and she's like oh i always thought that she was a guy <laughs> 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 so yeah she became very interested and very appreciative of the brand which is yeah. why she she now knows why I love the brand and which is why when I asked her, oh, do you want me to make you like an LV label mask or a Dior one? She's like, no, I want Chanel. Both Chanel. Of them. <laughs> you, have, you have turned your mom into a Chanel lover. <laughs> yeah, but she will never wear the bags. That's the thing because she's too scared to damage it and whatnot. But yeah, that's just a little side story. It's, it's interesting because once you know the heritage and the, 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 the history behind it, you really appreciate it more, even if you don't carry it or even if you never buy it, you just appreciate it for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Maria, <laughs> for Ew, the super wow. chat, super sticker. Okay, so Ying Li is saying that both Celine and Loewe canvas are really beautiful. True, have true. Mm. Have I ever... Mm. 
I've never, I've never seen Celine Camp. Have I? I don't remember if I did. Have you? I, I, I think I have, but I've never paid attention to it. Mm. Like when I've wa I walked into the store and I've seen it, but I just go, I just make a beeline for their leather bags. Okay, right? That's what they're famous for. But I remember seeing a few of their bags, which are made of canvas. I just had the feet. It, it is not uh, not something that I think on the top of mind. Sort of maybe like Moana, right? Because then I didn't even know they had canvas bags. I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so true. Uh, I feel like now that we know so much about Moana, we need to know more about the other brands too. <laughs> you know, oh actually, God, more we research. Ask as well, what is the next brand that we you want us to do? Because we are thinking that if you, because this is our first time doing this, so the series of you know know the brand you know brand you know brand series what is the next brand that you want us to dive into like yeah i think let us know and then we will uh, pick one yeah 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 like more in details more than just what you see in the store mm. so shanna is saying that she was told Guaya is very flimsy compared to other canvas. You know, the only thing that I know about the Guaya canvas is that it's not even canvas, it's linen. Linen, yeah. So it's almost like a thinner fabric in a way and it is coated. And but I wonder if that's why um, it's flimsier. But I'm maybe sure, like- <laughs> Maybe our next one will be a- uh Goya. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, I'm sure there's a reason behind the design. Like, I'm sure <laughs> there's an explanation to why they did that, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Maria is just explaining the same thing. Goya linen, more delicate. Yes. Oh, thank you, Deborah. You guys are so amazing. Okay, so TT says, I would go for Guaya. Structured toes don't look appealing to me. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that uh, maybe differentiates Guaya is that they are a lot less structured, a lot more casual, mm -hmm. right? I think a lot of people like how lightweight it is as well. Grace, am I oh. reading your question? Grace Kim said her, what's S-I-L? Sister-in-law. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bought the canvas tote and used it daily two years with no, oh, 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 okay, okay. Yes. Yes. Chanel 19 large, nicer than the Jumbo Classic flap. <laughs> oh, we have an, I have an announcement about Chanel. So people. <laughs> tomorrow onwards there's a price increase <laughs> wait worldwide uh, i heard singapore i heard i don't know if it's tomorrow but in november onwards there's going to be a price increase and i carolina also said that us is having a price increase right i uh, carolina uh, carolina can uh, confirm but uh, there is com there's one coming in singapore and i believe the chanel 19 is inside so mm. yep <laughs> it's uh, i haven't heard anything but like i said before my essays don't tell me anything um and i yeah i wonder because like i heard that sometimes they you, we call it price increases but are they really price increases or price adjustments adjustments so be. we'll see if it's like a huge jump then yes it's an increase if it's like a couple hundred dollars then maybe it's an adjustment i don't know <laughs> okay kayla i bought the lv ritzy brush at access wall last month but didn't check carefully until yesterday found out two hook lock on the mini brush it wasn't the same the two what what was it not the same let me see what the next first i thought i see something wrong one is more golden than the other clearly that they are two different hook locks So there are different tones of gold. Is that what you mean? So there's a quality control then. 
if um qual- I mean quality control issue, if I understand correctly, they didn't. Is that what you say you're saying? Um, can can you just take it back because if if that's the case and it's brand new, then they should just exchange it for you. Totally right, Cat. Totally, totally. Um, is it the two lobster locks? I that's how I understood it on the small pouch, right? I. I think mine is two different tones, but I don't know if they're two different locks. Um, but Wait, it, what? Let me see. Mine yeah, you didn't know that? <sighs> Mine's right here. They look very similar, if not... Really? It would be like the same. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let me go grab mine. <laughs> <laughs> Unless... Okay, so... So, okay. Unless you mean, because see this, this gold and this gold is different. Do you mean that? Because, okay, and maybe you mean that because, you know, LV is known to have different color tone gold on their hardware. But then these two should be the same because these are the same locks. But, but this gold may not be the same as this gold, like on the zipper pull. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and then also, let me grab my big pouch if I can. I wonder if she means like the small lock is the same gold as the big lock because it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. So it's this gold, lock. this big this gold, gold yeah. is go- more golden than this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That's what it's I different, so. yes. It's different. But That's what these I thought. two should be the same. These two that, that are the same should be the same. And then these two, the bigger ones, should be the yeah, same. Different. But then, but then the different components don't have to be the same. Yeah, because that's how LV is. It's it's really frustrating. Yes, I understand. If that's what you mean, maybe let us know if that's what you mean because that's normal. Like yeah, this is normal. normal. <laughs> it can even be different between the lock and the D ring. Like yeah. the lock would be more golden than the D ring. Which is yeah. the strangest thing ever, but it happens with LV. Maybe it won't happen with Moana because they won't let that happen. At Moana. <laughs> They'll take it back several times. <laughs> Maybe we need to buy Moana bags instead. But that's the thing. They're not really, they don't have that many different type, like fun handbags. So yeah. that's, that's, that's the drawback. Like you, you can't buy like the fun, trendy pieces, you know what I mean? <laughs> Kayla, plus the glazing on the canvas tap taps to hold the ring for the hook lock was unfinished. Looks like we'll crack if I start using it. Oh, uh, let me you see. Here? You mean here? here? Yeah, I think the uh, round, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it won't happen in Moana. <laughs> It's actually norm. It's normal, as in like it's normal for LV standard. I'm telling you, it's not. It's not glazed there either because it's so. If they glaze that, there's no way it's gonna peel off anyway. Yeah. It. It's. I'm sorry, but it's kind of normal if that's what you mean. Right here, right, Clearla. This part. Yep. No glazing. It's normal. Yeah, there isn't. It's totally normal for this bag and and for a lot of LV bags, unfortunately. That's how it is constructed. Oh, wait, she has more feedback. <laughs> Went straight to the store. Luckily, they got two more to exchange, even though I bought it from the LV. Oh, okay. So maybe yours has more problems then. Maybe it's mm-hmm. like, so, we're, so they were able to exchange it for you, right? Awesome. I hope so. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, uh, wow. that's a lot of issues, huh? Yeah. But that's the thing, though. What we told you is normal. So I, I, are you saying those things or is it worse than this? If it's worse than this, then yeah, it's not normal. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, Gina's here. <gasps> Hi, Gina. Hi, babe. Oh, yeah, I just saw, I just saw her. All right. 
Let me see. Let's so while you look for the next one, so everybody who came, who's st who's still here, or I, I just came in next week on my channel, uh, for the Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Asia timing, we're starting at twelve o'clock because the folks in America, Europe, they've got daylight savings. Who does daylight savings anymore? But you know. Uh I know. You know what? I I think they. I was researching that earlier because I I had to, I had to figure out is it is it better if we shift you folks or shift us folks? You know, then then we would have to join at seven, or you guys would have to join at noon instead. And the thing is, I think there's still a lot of countries that are in the daylight saving, like switching back and forth every year, twice a year. So. Um, mm. Yeah, but apparently Europe is gonna stop doing that in 2021. So Finally, do that one more year. Disruptive. I know. <laughs> what? What? Um, am I supposed to be waking up later or earlier? <laughs> but anyway, we're not complaining about daylight saving. So on my channel next week, everybody on Amy's side is still the usual ATM. timing. Uh, but yeah, perfect. for us in the Southeast Asia. Uh, most of us here, we are sticking to the, so we are, we're moving one hour ahead, okay? So instead of starting at 11 a.m., we're going to start at 12 p.m., which is sort of like in between the time right now, right? We're not, you know, we're not eating into your lunch time. But instead of finishing in two hours, we will cut short the live stream to one and a half hours. So usually we finish by 1 p.m. and everybody goes off to eat their lunch, but maybe you just hang on for another half an hour. So we're, we're going to shorten the live stream to one and a half hours, which I think it's better for a lot of us too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll we'll be able to to shorten it because I know it's hard sometimes when we just keep going and then next thing you know, it's like two hours later. <laughs> but then Kat would be starving. So her tummy should tell her if it's time to go. I know. <laughs> like, I think I need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can try that. Unless, uh, oh, thank you, Chris. Chris thank Tan. you. Wow. Oh, you guys. Nice um, otherwise, well, I was thinking. Although we're not, we're not, we're not doing that. But I was thinking, is it better if maybe I go a half hour before and then you go half hour later? Like I don't know, but we could try doing just the same eight o'clock here first. And then if it doesn't work out, then we can figure something else out, yeah. right? How long? How long is this daylight savings supposed to go for? Till March, March eight, I think, <laughs> something like that. Okay, why don't we just try next week first for same time you, and then change our time, and then we'll see how it goes next week, folks. We might adjust a bit, but you know, just just because there's daylight savings. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because that's the thing. It's like right in your lunchtime and right at my dinner time. So it's like, am I like, you know, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll try it out and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll see which which one is better on, on either both sides. <laughs> oh, OK. Celine canvas is encoded. That's why I don't remember it. Mm. So it's just fabric then. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it's still canvas if it's... Um... Okay, Lee is suggesting Delvo. I see two votes for Goya. Ah. Shanna. Maria. Ah, okay. So there's Goya. Yes, yes, yes. Um... Oh, streetwear brands, off-white. Uh, off we can white. add it to the list. I, I'm Definitely. not familiar with like off white. Like that would be my husband's territory. Like he he bought Strucy. I never even knew that. As uh, he bought Strucy um, Birkenstock collabs, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and he he loves Supreme and off white. So that would be his his um, forte in a way. But we'll definitely be having to writing writing all this down. So there's also Valextra and other. That's another. Um, Delvo. <laughs> suggestion. Delvo. <laughs> Forgot. OK, 
Okay, I'm writing them all down. <laughs> she, so I asked my essay from Chanel that day, but she's, she did just say no so far. Yeah, it's, some essays don't really tell you either. And some, some of them don't know until they know. Until last minute. Mm hmm Let's see, let's see. Okay. Yes, LV, even the Speedy B25 D ring hooks are different types of gold. Exactly, which is why I'm saying that there's a lot of the LV bags, you know, the mismatching and the gold tone hardware is very common. It's not a defect, but I also don't know why they do that. It's interesting, right? Mm. And you know, still... uh, a, a few years ago, oh, wait. Okay, a few years ago, I went to this um, event in Mona Monaco, Monaco, Monte Carlo, because my chairman, he was awarded one of the um, awards there. So the ceremony was there. That was like maybe five, six years ago. And I met one of the entrepreneurs there. She, she was, we were sitting at the same lunch table. And she, she was uh, with her husband. I think the husband looks like she's like really old. <laughs> maybe probably like 70, 80 years old. And she was sharing that why they were there because a few years before that, they were part of the entrepreneurs that was there as well. And she was just talking. And then the next thing that she just shared, because she was looking at my bag, she's like, oh, do you like these sort of bags? And I think I was carrying like an LV bag. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, okay, did you know? And then she was talking about the locks. Um, this this kind of like, you know, just saying, oh, she was explaining. And I was wondering like, why is she talking about the locks? Then I found out that her fam, their family, this entrepreneurial family, that they produce the locks. They do the coating for the locks of a lot of luxury houses, which is why their family business is the coating of locks. And I was like, oh, you, <laughs> you manufacture the locks and all these hardware pieces. And she said that, she can obviously because they're customer, right? They're OEM and all. They cannot name the brand names, but she says that there's a very special coating that they give to these locks to give it the shine. And she was telling me all about it. I was like <laughs> awestruck because there I was going like, I like these bags. She's like, yeah, we make the locks. <laughs> no, we make the hardware. It's like, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it's a technology that they use to coat it multiple times. But can you imagine like, if you are like, if you're LV and all, you actually need these kind of so many producers around the world with the technology and the factories. And also probably they just have a lot of different producers, which is why maybe some of them is coated differently. But that was interesting. Yeah. You know what? I, I would be interested to ask why they're different sometimes. But, <laughs> but yeah, it wouldn't have been appropriate to ask. <laughs> but I, really that time, ask. That I, really time, I didn't know they were different. I, I was yeah, like, but maybe back then we didn't really have that issue or um, do we? Because maybe we didn't know. I mean, I swear this is like nitpicking though. This is like <laughs> Yes. But you know what? It's true because back then, I think, uh, Okay, so back then, back when I say back then, I meant like my first LV bags. I only owned at the time uh, my um, AP leather Alma, and that one is you know silver hardware. It was uniform everywhere. It was very well made, especially back two thousand eight. Super well made at the time, and then I bought the Speedy Thirty, just the regular. There was hardly any hardware except the 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 couple of you know square rings to attach to the torn handles and then the lock so no issues there um my next few bags or the next bag actually was uh called the evora so it was a huge satchel actually i never worn it because it was too heavy for me but i loved i loved it when i saw it so i just bought it um that one was really well made because it was all like lined in this microfiber lining. It was 
very solid and all the hardware was very shiny. Like it had that beautiful big zipper pull too. Mm. So I never had noticed any problems back then. What, what about you? I never did. And I, I seriously wonder, is it because the demand is so much more now? Like maybe when, you know, when the time that I met this entrepreneur and her business was obviously 30, 40 years ago, they were probably maybe one of the few few manufacturers like in those 30, 40 years ago that supplied to majority, like 80%, maybe 70%. But now that the demand is global and you're making, you're churning out so many, these, they probably need to expand elsewhere. And um, maybe that's why we see it now, like the slight differences in tone. It, it it's maybe not a quality, like it's not the it's not to say it's less good. It's just a tone difference. It's like one's more yellow, one's not as yellow. Um I don't know, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm seeing a lot of comments about daylight saving Australia, New Zealand, uh, USA. I know part most of the USA has it too, <laughs> but then New Way. No, who? TT. TT saying stick to two hours. You know what? That's the thing we were trying to decide earlier too. But that's so for you guys, if 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 it's same for you guys, it means that I either don't eat dinner <laughs> until 9 p.m. or I have to eat way earlier. But sometimes I can't eat that early just because it's don't have food yet. <laughs> I mean, for yeah, for me, it's no issue because I eat all I, I eat. Very, I mean, like when I'm, I'm still young, I'm still young. You know, we can still eat at weird timings. You know, we don't have gastric issues yet. <laughs> oh, I can but, eat at weird timings too. Yeah, but it's just that um, I know I will be starving at 9 p.m. Like literally, <laughs> I can fall off this chair. <laughs> that kind of starving. But yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah. we'll try it. We'll try it. And then we'll we'll see. We'll see how it goes. May maybe at 1.30 p.m. Like, all right, girl, go keep going. I'll be eating my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to just do that. Exactly. <laughs> as long as you guys don't mind it's being more casual. I mean, you guys want to hang out. Like, I mean, you guys are saying you want the two hours. <laughs> it's funny because you guys are our Luxies, which is which awesome. is why you want the two hours. But then we sometimes get these comments like, oh, it's way too long. We don't want to watch for two hours. Well, well, they're not our Luxies, I guess. So that's why we love you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're always wondering like, we were like, oh man, one hour, it's it's just nice. Like one hour video, it's like, it's it's good. But actually when you start to talk and everything, it's like, oh my gosh, it's one and a half hours already. And then next thing you know, like, let's do five more minutes and 15 minutes fly by. So hitting it at two hours is anything more than that is not, is, is actually excessive. But yeah, we do get comments like two hours is too long. Who can sit there for two hours? <laughs> exactly. we, can. we We often get those. You guys just don't see it, but um. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I also wanted to say that, so yeah, Bulgari is another one. Um, what was I going to say? Oh my gosh, I forgot what I was going to say. Often get? No, I was going to say something else. I <laughs> forgot what I was going to say anyway. It might come back. <laughs> uh, oh, no, wait. What was I going to say? I seriously <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Oh, okay. I see. I Okay. I know why there's a difference between a, a one hour pre-film video and a two hour actual live stream. Because when it's live, you guys are here too, mm. right? So we're actually, you know, aside from the fact that we are not really seeing you like in flesh, we know you're there. We know you're behind your phone, your screen. So... It feels more intimate, right? Uh, and then it feels more, uh, well, interactive for sure, because we're literally interacting live. Um, so I think that's why the one hour is just like, it, it flies by, literally it flies by. And then next thing you know, we're over two hours already. So that's why, which is why. <laughs> this is what a, this is, this is like having like our weekly sit down, chit chat, you know, when you get together, it's like, rah, 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 rah. Like, oh my gosh, where did the day go? And you know what's good is that if you feel like time flies so fast, it means that you're having a good time too. Because the only time you feel like it's too long is if you're not having a good time. 
then why are you watching, girl? <laughs> why are you watching if it's too long for you? <laughs> Just don't watch. Go watch a movie or something. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, Christina is saying, not into Guaya, simply put off by their bad services in Singapore. Oh, they size you down the minute you walk in. Really? Are they all like that though? Or is it just the one person? Yeah, that's terrible. But you, you get these people everywhere, not just in a luxury store. You will get that in pretty much like at work. <laughs> some anyway. person random person you don't know in a grocery store they they sometimes do that too like it's their problem it's not yours yeah. <laughs> oh man what what hong kong too. heard they're bad in hong kong too mm -hmm. we don't have one here so i wonder what what it is that uh you know, I heard, I think it was other people's videos that they they also are not like super, their services are not super good even in the U.S., I think. Because I think in the U.S. they have, if I remember correctly, there should be a store in San Francisco. I think L.A. for sure. And I I have heard, I think I remember seeing videos of people saying that they didn't, get the best services either so i don't know is it a training no. issue okay that's a good question can we buy mona bags online so um i if you check the description which i already put in there uh, i put their official website so you can look at just the 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 website just for the general feel of of their iconic bags but they don't actually sell it on their official website the website that does sell Moana bags is 24sev.com. So 24s.com. Um, even on the Moana site, they will actually uh, tell you to go there. They redirect you to go there. So mm. I wonder if they have some sort of agreement. I'm not sure what their relationship is. But 24s? Yeah, 24s.com. I, I think 24s is owned by LV. Oh, okay. I Maybe think that's so. I think that's I read somewhere. <laughs> So okay. you will find some of the bags there, not all. So you will find the, you will find the Rejane there. You will find the canvas there, like some canvas, not all. You will also find the Gabrielle there. So they're most, I think these are probably their most popular bag, I want to say. Because yep. yeah, I already linked them so you can check it out. It's already so in the description. That's right. So 24S is owned by LVMH. LVMH uh -huh. renames its e-commerce site 24 Severus, S-E-V-R-E-S. -E -S. Yeah. I think it's an address. It's oh. like because it sounds like an address, so they just made that into their uh, URL. Ah, yep. So it belongs to LV. So that LV explains. is selling LV things online on another store. <laughs> But their their selection is very very limited, yeah. like which is why I had such a hard time finding prices. There's just no pricing online uh, because it was not even all available. But that's one place you can find online some some bags, not all. Makes you wonder what they are trying to do because it has no direct. I mean, of course, if you check the ownership, L, uh, 24S, it comes out LVMH's e-commerce site. But if you think about it, it might be their step into fighting with giants like Louisa, Louisa Via Roma, um, mm. Natchez Fashion, uh, Farfetch and all, but they are owned by the actual brand itself. And they could be building something that is that will just take over the whole e-commerce thing because matches fashion and all they're all independent right they're just retailers out there e-commerce retailers but can you imagine the own fashion house saying yeah you know we'll do it ourselves mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. i'm just seeing maria's comment actually she says sev 24 website is the bon marché department store in paris mm -hmm. uh. yeah like I said, I'm not super familiar, but that's the only place I was able to find 
any sort of uh, availability that you can find through through online site. Yeah, through their online site. The discount is fifteen percent off as well. There's a discount. <laughs> There's a discount. Fifteen percent off full price item on twenty four S. Wow. Ooh. Wow. That means you can. That means you can get discounts on Mo Mo Moana. Really? Unless yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, this this website will see it boom in a couple of years because it's it's really new, right? It's coming up. Oh, I have seen people collaborate with them. Oh. Uh, one YouTuber watched she's from Hong Kong. She, I believe, it was a collaboration. Otherwise, why why would she talk about that? <laughs> Yeah. Um, some I, of the I points that I can try now. Video in the background. I wasn't listening super carefully, but I that's what I do usually. Sometimes I when I get ready, I have videos just playing by itself, like the whole list mm -hmm. playing by itself. Uh okay, anyway, Shanna, I asked the LV essay about the different colors of the D-ring and hooks. She told me D-rings in brass is to be in line with their trunk. I am not sure if that is the real reason. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carolina. You know what? The thing is, I eat a lot. <laughs> I cannot just snack, especially because uh, dinner is my biggest meal. If I don't get a nice dinner, like a hot, nice, big dinner, I get unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Cranky. I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd rather just sit down and eat my proper meal, even if it's late. So yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. Don't <laughs> but worry. thank you. It's not that I don't want to eat in front of you guys, but I love eating. Oh, mukbang. <laughs> I don't know. If we'll... Should we do that? I don't know. I, I'm. Oh my god! You know that's a good idea. Maybe we should have. We should try a mukbang. Maybe we could. We could be like eating, like you know. I mean, I'm always drinking and sipping, but imagine if we are eating like. <laughs> and everybody mukbang together, all the whole Luxies mukbang together, because it is sort of like our dinner time, right? Yeah. Except for MK and our European folks who probably need to have a very, very, very early breakfast. <laughs> yes, or or they're just still in bed, but listening to <laughs> before dragging themselves up. Um, yeah, we'll yep. we'll. We'll we'll play by ear and we'll we'll figure stuff out. Yeah, we'll we'll play by ear. We'll try it out and then we'll see if it's really not long enough. We'll do something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> more two hours, two hours, two hours. <laughs> I've been seeing all these two hours. You guys, that's Love awesome it. though. Love Thank that. You. Okay, okay. Let me see. It just jumped, so I have to go back. <laughs> I'm just I just scroll all the way down. I can see like mukbang, mukbang. I, I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Mukbang. And yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm plugging another I'm another channel, but uh, if you all like to watch mukbangs, go and watch um this this father son mukbang duo. They're called Crunch Bros. Uh, crunch as in crunchy. Crunch Brothers. It's the dad. The dad, I think he's Korean. And the son is Japanese-Korean. The son is only four years old. It is the cutest mukbang I have ever watched. I don't really like to watch mukbangs because I find it a little bit kind of gross and excessive. But, you know, <laughs> but this is not... Like I, I don't I don't hate at it. I just like it, I don't find it like super amazing. But there are some where they're just chatting and eating together. I think those are okay. So the father-son duo, he's just eating just normal sushi, and the son is so cute. Do you you see a three or four year old just eating anything? Not picky at the food. He's just going, he's like, Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> anyway, they just started their YouTube channel in May. And they are at a hundred over thousand now because of that combination. It is so heartwarming to watch a father son, you know, collaborate. So yeah, if you like to watch mukbangs, I absolutely recommend this channel. Super cute. I think they're based out of California. 
um, cr crunch bros. Crunch bros. <laughs> That's what oh, they always do. I was, yeah, I was going to ask you because I'm like, oh, do they speak English then? Yeah. So, and they oh, speak man. Korean and Japanese. So, the, so the they father speak all those languages in during the mukbang. Yeah. Wow. And he, yeah. Amazing. I mean, well, not all. Like, they'll speak in the main language is English, but before they eat, they'll be like, Itadakimasu, Jawakumoso. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in Korean, but <laughs> it's so cute. And then sometimes the son will, you know, say, like, oh, this sushi roll in Japanese is called something, something. Really amazing. Like, because they are so they're what? Tri language, Korean, mm -hmm. Japanese, and uh, uh, English. Mm -hmm. Mukbang. If you guys, if you like to watch mukbangs, recommend. I, I, I watch it all the time. Like sitting there, going like, ah, so cute, so cute. Aww. <laughs> it's like the best age too. Yeah, four especially years old. if if. Uh, well, I, I've never watched them, but like the way you describe the the child, it's like it reminds me of my nephew. He eats. He loves eating. He's only two, but he's when he eats is like. It's like the the cutest thing. The to cutest watch. thing. <laughs> there was one. There was one. Uh, I know we're diverting slightly, but there was one um, episode where the dad took a huge burger and he was eating it, and then the the, the son Jordan he wanted to eat. He's like, I want to try, and he tries to bite it, but the burger is so big, right? And he bites it like he's like trying his best to bite it, and then the dad takes like turns the camera the, the the burger to the camera. <laughs> The bite is like this small. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so cute. Anyway, diversion of story. But yeah, if you like milk bars, I recommend this. Is, it's really heartwarming because you know it's it's in uh it's two like a parent parent father mm. duo. It's so cute. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. It's like reminds me because I have all these videos of my nephew saved on my phone. Sometimes I just save them when they post on their stories. I just do a screen grab and I save <laughs> all of it. It's just so adorable because like they're not going to stay at this age forever. Right. So, oh. so cute. Um, I'm back happy. I had a great experience at Moana in Singapore. Not sure if it was Takachimaya. Takachimaya. Oh, is that a... The area or the, the uh, it's a departmental store in oh, Singapore. Okay. I got to try on different sizes of the Gabrielle and essay answering my questions. Definitely made an impression. Mm -hmm. That's super. I feel like that's so important for. Um, it's so important because you would expect a good customer service, especially with. Uh, paying that much money, but not only that. Even if you just buy something that is not expensive, you. You deserve good experience, right? I feel mm. so. It's only fair that uh, that they gave that to you, and it's great that you did. You did get that because we sometimes also hear about the bad experiences, just like all the Guaya ones that we just came across, and you wonder why they have to do that. Like, why can't you just <laughs> not do that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. The two hook locks is different. I showed the essay, they were even shocked. Oh, oh it must be yeah. that bad then. Wow. Oh, man. Quality I'm control. glad that they're able to exchange it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, maybe we can do it next week since next week our topic is slightly different. But anyway, take a look at um, our, I mean, follow us on Instagram. Then we will post like what's happening, whether it's a mukbang live show. But definitely follow us on Instagram because we will also post like a countdown to the time so that you will not miss the timing. Because <laughs> it's like, is it twelve? Is it seven? Is it eleven? Yes, Especially yes, like yes. Onwards, yeah. Um, and and the thing is like, if you guys, because I know you've done like cat, I know you've done mukbang and and you you kind of come up with a theme of food. So for me, it's like any food, okay? So it, it, I can't just, I can't just like find that kind of food that day. It'll be whatever I'm eating that day. <laughs> so as long as you guys are okay with that, <laughs> it might be a big plate of rice in front of you with different things. <laughs> my big pork chop. <laughs> oh my gosh, how am I gonna set it up here? Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a challenge. Anyway, we'll figure we'll it out. To, 
it will have to be like this. It will be like screened down like that. And then we'll put uh -huh. the food like here. And then we'll be chatting like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I literally, because I'm in my bedroom, right? So I'm sitting on this dining chair, which I bring back afterwards when I'm done. And then I have this, this is a TV table, right? It's one of those, you know, you, you put in front of your couch when you want to eat something in front of your couch. So I'm already, I already have my laptop, my mic on top of it, like a bunch of crap. So <laughs> now I have to fit my food in here too. <laughs> but anyway, we'll work, we'll make it work. We'll work it out. <laughs> oh, oh my God, catch this. I just looked up Crunch Bro. So cute. Father, so sweet. Son, so adorable. Yeah, I, I have to check it out too. Check it out, check it out. It was one, I, I, I watch all of it. You know, when, when I have nothing to do, like I just want to waste time, but I want to waste time watching something that's like fun. I don't yeah. really watch Netflix. So I'll just watch and I, I tell you, it's like, I'm just going through, because the videos are really short, like maybe eight minutes, 12 minutes. There was oh, one, okay. just, yeah. yeah, it's not too long. It's not like, it's not like there's eating, 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 eating. <laughs> <laughs> they eat but it's just it's, it's just the interaction that is very heartwarming and the son's talking about the food and he's and he keeps copying the dad the dad's like mm, and the son's like mm. <laughs> so cute oh, there was one man. episode where he was eating the noodles the son was eating 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 and one of the noodles dropped on his shoulder and it stayed throughout the entire video <laughs> totally oblivious oh. of a noodle there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So cute. It's like really genuine. You know what? It's going to be such a, when he grows up, he's probably going to be like a huge YouTube star by then, uh, like oh, in really? five years when he's only nine. Oh, <laughs> but really? um, they're going to have all this archive of him on, in, in memory, right? Mm. I mean, I'm online and also they, I hope that they save it on, on their hard drive and then have that as their sort of memory yeah. of, him growing up. I guess now that I mean that's how it is now, right? Everything is online, everything's on video. Um and yeah, it's so cute. The, the 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 I think the family is a family of four. So apparently there's like they call themselves Crunch Dad, Crunch, Crunch Dad, Crunch I mean Crunch, I don't know what's his name. I think Crunch Son or Crunch Dad Jordan, then Crunch Mom. Because they didn't give their names, right? Crunch mom. And there's Crunch Baby. So apparently they have a baby, there's a baby sister. So I think if you see this, I mean, if you like, like just to follow a, a family growing up, this will be interesting because the whole family will get involved, right? Eventually. So there's a crunch baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so cute. So cute. Okay, Linda, planning to get the Chanel Gabriel for Christmas, influenced by moi. Does anyone here know if there's going to be a price increase in Hong Kong? Yeah, is there? I hope it's just going to be an adjustment, but not not a real increase because, yeah, they hurt. Like, not another 25%. Come on. It's just too much. It better be not. But just maybe they might do an adjustment because, anyway, usually, usually end of the year they do one. But, uh, yeah. So it's true. They, they do do one in usually in November. It's true. Oh, but if they do, it's not going to be their last one. So if you if you get one before, great. If not, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's still going to be more later. So that's how it is. Let's see. Oops. It keeps jumping. Well, we are almost at the two-hour mark, and we're doing really well. At least this time, we didn't uh, lose a bunch, <laughs> bunch of comments from before because sometimes when there's a lot of comments, it jumps really fast, and then um, and then we can't see the beginning. So that's more mm -hmm. unfortunate. Okay, more development. Understand how you feel. I hope LV sh keeps all the hooks and D-rings in the same color. Yeah, they won't, or they don't at least right now. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think, she you know, when, when, when I see kids, when I see them, like, oh, you're so cute. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's my own. I'm like, can you eat your food? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
it should be this way. I feel exactly the same way. It's like other people's kids, you cannot, you cannot, it's not, you don't have the authority to do it. First of all, it, it, it's, it's wrong. If you try to lecture someone else's kid, but when it's your own, you gotta be, you gotta be doing the bad cop thing. Cause who's going to learn from <laughs> true where is he going to learn the manners and and the the good ways of be, becoming a good human being there's other people is not going to do that for you and if they do then it's wrong right so you should be doing it yourself i would be like eat your food eat your food don't play with your food <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're not eating the vegetable eat the vegetable eat it eat it <laughs> <laughs> well but the other thing is like um, so like I said, I love watching my, um, sorry, I'm trying to see if there's another comment. Uh, I'm, I'm watching my nephew and I love, I love watching like, you know, clips here and there. Obviously we get sent the good the stuff best clips, <laughs> but all this time in between when we don't see the, you know, when he's being a brat or not just him any any kid okay just any child you don't you don't get to see that right so those are the those, those are, are the, the sacrifices times. and the hard times of what parents need to deal with those are the oh. real the <laughs> real um yeah those do not those don't get shown in public those like get here right now exactly and then of course every uh every individual is they have their personality that you know some will be you know more mellow and others will have more character so you also have to work with the personality of that person just in real life you've got co-workers that are this kind of per person you've got other ones that you try like, you can get along more easily and you just have to kind of learn to work with both Totally. It's never going to be perfect. If I were a mom, and if I get one of me, <laughs> <laughs> it will be what my mom would say, karma. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I was a monster. I know I, know I, wa I know I was. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not shy to admit it. I know I was. I was just a, I was a hot, hot mess. <laughs> What what is the messiest thing that you did? That oh really... man, I was such a brat. I was brat, brat. <laughs> I was a brat. Like the ones that would cry, you know, like <laughs> be like black face at the at the at the supermarket like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've grown out of it. It's just that my mom, like, wow, you were a lot to handle. <laughs> But in Has front of all the aunties, in front of auntie, I'm like, auntie, auntie. Oh, you're the smart one. Oh, <laughs> but behind the door, I'm like. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder if it has anything to do. I feel like it does, though. If it has anything to do with you being the youngest. Because I'm the eldest. I, have, I had to be not only leading by example, but I always had to be the first one to do anything right. And I had to be the one taking care of the younger brothers. And I went through everything yes, first before they did, right? So it's so different. The dynamic is very different. True. It has absolutely everything to do with the fact that I was the youngest because I knew I could <laughs> get away with it. <laughs> so funny. Oh, funny. So funny. Okay, I think I see one more question. Oh wait, did I did I just was this a question? I joined late. This question may have been asked. November first, Chanel price increase. Is it true? I've Apparently, heard of a it. lot of people said it is. Uh, and Kat also received a uh, notice from your essay, right? Yeah. Hints, yeah. hints, hints. There could be a price increase. I'm like, what? what, the, what? Usually, it means it is. Yeah. I'm back happy. I've clean shine my Speedy B20. Uh, sorry, Speedy B hardware twice already since I bought it. 2018. You did it yourself or you, you got it done by them at LV? Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Wait, 
I think you have a follow. It's fun to do, but it shouldn't be gathering rust or dirt that quickly. My sister-in-law, Speedy, from early 2010, hasn't rusted one bit. Mm. Oh. That's so sad. My Speedy <laughs> is from... Wait, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, I think I, I agree with her, you know, like my older, my older um, LV bags, it's still super, super, super shiny. I've never had any issue with like rusting or turning green, like no, none. Um, so yeah, bringing it back to polish. I've never done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's true. None of my older bags had any issues. Okay, I have to share this. So um, I'm looking at my Speedy right now. It's right there. And it has no issues either. That one, I bought it in Europe. I bought it in 2017. So I don't know when it was produced. It, it could have been late 2016 or early 2017. No issues. Um, but my Spring Street, it's not a big deal, honestly. The, the bag is fine. <laughs> but the strap uh, on, you know, the clip. So let me show you. The lobster clips. So the the strap. The, it comes with a detachable strap, right? So the the clip, like this part that that moves, this mm. part. There was like, I I started seeing like I'm like, is this tarnishing that there's like little circles? What? Just this part, like the moving part, and I I had to bring it into LV and they they fixed it for me. I'm like, what the? Because I never used the strap. I, I used the bag twice alone, but I never used the strap. So I wonder, is is there like yeah, there is a quality, there's a quality decline for sure, but uh the way that my essay was trying to explain to me was very technical. She said it's something about the brass, blah blah blah, and that she can just polish it, which she did. She totally fixed it. So you can definitely bring it back to LV, they'll fix it for you. Or if it's something they can't fix, they'll they'll just replace it for you. Because I said, what if you can't fix it? She's like, oh, we replace your strap, obviously, because it's brand yeah. new. Um, but yeah, it's just weird that it could do that on its own. Whereas older bags, I'm looking at my older bags, nothing, zero, nada. Yeah. My par my Parlemo from 2006, I think, 2006, 2007, it, the hardware is like so shiny. Like if I ever want to get rid of the bag, I'll keep all the hardware, <laughs> cut it out. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's we're on a two hour, two hour mark, so I'm going to speed up through the last few questions. Okay, Amy, how are you enjoying your mini Lady Dior? Thinking of getting one. Husband is also watching to help. So convince him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. she needs one. Husband, she needs one. Just get it, or let her get it. <laughs> uh, no, no, seriously. Um, I I am enjoying it, as in like I enjoy having it, but because I haven't worn it out yet, because you know why. Um, I I've mainly only been using my. I've only been using the multi brush because I can wipe the canvas because I'm paranoid. If I'm out, even if I don't touch anything, I still feel like I need to wipe my bag when I come home. I need to take a shower. I'm just that kind of paranoid, uh, which is why I haven't brought out my my uh, Lady Dior yet. Um, the other bags that I have brought out is uh, just my phone clutch from Chanel. I, I use that like once. But that's about it. Like I, I try to limit going out. So I haven't used it, but I still enjoy it. And I still love the fact that I have it just because it's such an iconic piece. Like I said, it's it's not a piece that you will get that you will wear a lot. It's not. And I knew that going in. When I bought it, I knew that it wasn't going to be my everyday piece. It's probably a piece I will wear, you know, a handful of times per year, maybe a bit more if it wasn't the pandemic. But I, I have to be honest and realistic here. It's it's not an everyday bag. Just the way you have to get in and out of it, it's not it's not an everyday bag type of design because the flap, you know, and the phone fits just so like just fits. It's kind of snug. Um, 
but I love having it because I know that when I need it, it's there. And I just need the one. As far as I know right now, I just want the one anyway. Um, I'm a big fan of the Lady Dior, so it's not to say that I will never add another one, but um, yeah. I'm just glad I, I got over with it. I don't have to think about it for a while. Kat is thinking about hers. <laughs> she needs to get that one. She needs to get her Gabrielle. She needs to get her 19. And then I'm she'll be her. very happy for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I definitely want to get my Lady Dior. I think, uh, actually, I'm going to ask you, if you bought, like, let's say, if you got the mini Lady Dior in a dark color, let's say black, black lambskin, do you think you would wear it more often? No. It's because it's the way you get in and out of it. It's really not an everyday style that, mm, unless you don't really put your phone in it, but I do put my phone in my bags. Because mm. I think for me, the fact that I always buy the larger size phone and it just fits, mm. it's it's going to be annoying if you get in and out of it often and... Yeah, so it, unless you don't put your phone in it and everything else is pretty much, you know, keys are pretty easy to get in and out of. Uh, your card holder is pretty easy. Um, what else do you put in it? It's like so oh. small, the bag. Um, there's also something about those handles too. You have to, uh -huh. yeah, those handles, they do fall if you're not holding, when you're not holding it, right? And when you're wearing crossbody, yes, it can stay upright. It's fine. Um, let me put it this way. If you're getting the size up in a black dark color, then yes, it'll be more of an everyday bag. Mm -hmm. But not my size. I truly don't think you're going to enjoy using the mini as an everyday bag. There's just no way. The Getting in and out of it, it's just... It's a novelty to get in and out of this bag. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Interesting. Okay. So hopefully that helps us her out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I yeah. want it. I still want it. <laughs> yes. I definitely I still recommend it. And and the thing is like if you want it to be more of an everyday bag, I do suggest the size up from it. The size small is still really beautiful. And it's still like if you remove the strap, you can still wear it at a gala if you had a gala to go to. Like, you know what I mean? It's still really iconic very nighttime appropriate. I just happen to really like the mini because it's so cute. But um, if you also want to use it for every day, definitely get the size up. Mm. Try it, try it first. I, I feel like maybe that's what you need to, to decide on, the size maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I spent so much time on that question. I believe the problem at LV is not making their own hardware. Mm, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just like what Kat said earlier. Let's see. I think that's one oh more. Oh my God. What? Why are we hearing all these tarnishing problems? Bring it back to LV because they have the products to polish it for you. For sure. They can do it for you. Um, that's what I do. I always, if I have a problem, I just, I just tell them and then they take care of it. Um, Oh, Carolina, I have the Speedy B25 in monogram. I I had a Speedy B25 in Damier Ben that I bought, I want to say 2015. But then I didn't like the strap because at the time I was still wearing the strap crossbody and it, it, it really cuts to your it's it's just a very uncomfortable strap so i changed it to the monogram version but then i don't wear the bag because i just figured out that the style just wasn't me but i still love the bag i just don't really wear it so yeah speedy b25 canvas monogram <laughs> do we need to make a slideshow for this i feel like we did one didn't we no. Yeah, we did one. Our next, our our updated wish list. Oh yeah, we did. We did a live stream. We don't need to update it that quickly again, did we? <laughs> you already bought a new bag. Yeah, so I, I bought a bag from that list. <laughs> did I buy another one? No, right? 
I bought some ready to wear. So I did, I did also um, cross off some ready to wear. So I just haven't revealed it yet. Um, but yeah, it looks like that's our last question. It's we're doing good in time. Well, thank you. Anyway, um, hope that you guys enjoyed today's live show. Remember, next week is going to be well, same time for us in North America, but for the folks in Asia, it's going to be an hour later because of our daily <laughs> daylight saving time ending uh, until March. But yeah, just just make sure you check on the. Um, on the notifications so on instagram on cat's channel and yeah we'll go from there yep sounds good thanks guys Bye. and Bye. we'll see you and talk to you again next week same time oh no no not same time <laughs> same time for us, different time for <laughs> cat's side and um same day same day bye, bye. <laughs>